Hi loves and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing my neutral designer handbag collection. I'm pretty much known for my colorful handbags. You probably wouldn't think of me as a neutral bag collector. And as much as like seeing collection after collection of the same neutral bags really bores me, I do understand that they have a place in a wardrobe. And I also understand that neutral bags are often easier for people to use. I want to share some tips so that you can create a collection that stands out and really feels easy you and not the same as everyone else who collects neutral bags. And since there is a bit of debate over what a neutral bag is, I'm going to define it here as black, white, brown, beige, and gray. And by the way, if you're new here, hi, my name is Morgan. I make videos about luxury handbags, fashion, and lifestyle. So if that's your thing, please subscribe and turn on notifications. I upload once a week and I would love to have you here. And let's get into tips for buying neutral bags as I share my neutral designer handbag collection. Just starting from the top of the closet, working my way down, and then I've got some bags that are around the room stored in different places. And please bear with me when I'm showing like completely black bags because the camera lighting tends to change and I just, I don't know how to fix it. First designer handbag I have in my neutral bag collection is my Senriff Aria. This is the dragon leather. It's what they call their croc embossed leather. Well, yes, this is quite a basic bag. I wanted something logo free for travel and this really serves the purpose. It's very versatile. And a tip for adding a little spice to your neutral bags is to look for these different types of leathers. Look for something with a little bit of texture, like a croc embossed or a python imprinted on leather if you don't want to go for exotic. It just gives a little something more to your basic neutral style bag. The second neutral bag in my collection is my Chanel Square Wallet on a Chain. It has a nice big back pocket. You can fit a phone up and down in here, but it does hang out past the top of the bag. This is one they don't do every collection. It's quite rare and I think honestly it's because it's so much more functional than a rectangular one and you get so much more space in here. I got this bag in gray because this style, I love that it comes with a shoulder pad. It has a zipper pocket in the middle here. You have card slots there, card slots here, and you can just fit so much in here that it's almost like buying a mini Chanel bag. The price point is that of a wallet on a chain. So for me, if I'm gonna branch out into a different neutral, like a gray, go at a smaller size for a better price point and see how you get on with it. I knew this was going to be exclusively a fall winter color for me. Next bag in my neutral collection is my Chanel nylon. Now this is from their ski line. They don't produce nylon bags every single year and the ski collection is usually sold at particular boutique. You're most likely going to have to go through a personal shopper to get the nylon bag from a ski collection if you live in a hot climate like Dubai. I've never seen it on the shelves here. I would say go pre-loved. I got this bag for $600 and I think $14 or $15. At the time I wanted an alternative to the Prada nylon. It has a zip on the inside too so this bag is incredible incredibly secure. This was also made to go with the ski line, so you know it's made to be durable. It's supposed to be a sporty bag, something you can carry in the snow. It's not precious, and there are not many Chanel bags that aren't precious these days. So when you're building that neutral collection, think about your functionality and where you live and explore different fabrics. The next bag in my collection has a little bit of color to it, but I thought I would include it because it is mainly white. This is my coach little like baguette type of a bag. I have had this since, I don't know if it was middle school or high school. And something that I want to encourage you if you have a neutral collection is to look at whites. They're actually quite easy to clean. As long as you look out for color transfer for like you don't want to wear this with denim you don't want to wear this with like a black coat or something but if you're careful about what you wear this is a great summer neutral white is surprisingly easy to clean now patent or treated leather in white is a little more delicate and I will get into that later. The next bag on my list is my pride and joy. It is my black cocoa handle. This is the old style of stitching, but I always thought my one classic caviar leather gold hardware Chanel was gonna be a medium classic flat until I moved to Dubai. And you go in the mall and you see 20 of them. Like I completely get, especially for ladies who wear an abaya, the black classic flap is like the easiest to wear because you don't have to worry about color transfer. Even ladies who wear a baya and ladies who don't, you see the black medium classic flap with gold hardware everywhere here. Like there is such a high concentration of that bag, it literally lost its magic for me. But I do still think that everyone who is a handbag collector or who wants a designer bag that's very classic needs a black caviar gold hardware Chanel in their collection. And for Chanel, 
it's not just about the classic flap being classic. There are elements that make a Chanel bag a classic. Look for that durable caviar leather. Look for this famous quilting in this style. And look for a bag that has that CC turn lock because a lot of their seasonal styles have these elements. And it means that you'll have a more special black Chanel bag that you can keep for life and will still look great for years to come, but it'll be different from what everyone else has. Now, if a classic flap is your thing, you go for it. The next bag on my list is my trendy CC square chain wallet. I adore, like, look at the size. Look, look at it next to my face. It is so tiny. Never envisioned I would get so much use out of such a teeny tiny itsy bitsy little bitty bag. This is by far my most used like nano bag that doesn't fit a phone size. This bag is a few years old now and it still looks great. There are some minor scratches, but that's going to happen with lambskin. That's something you have to just kind of know when you're getting lambskin. It's not gonna be scratch free forever if you actually use the bag. So once you have a few of your everyday bases covered in your neutral collection, it's time to go for a fun bag. Neutral does not have to be boring and this one, nothing gets more fun like I love this bag I use it all the time whether you get it in black whether you get it in white there are neutral options the colors obviously are gorgeous but this white one goes with everything sports wear casual wear evening wear formal wear it's a little too casual but pretty much if you're going from a nice dinner out to even like getting your nails done in your sweats this looks amazing it just adds something to every outfit and because it's white or even if you get the black you can wear it with everything even if your outfit's colorful white handle does get a bit dirty but otherwise this bag has been great i use it all the time it's one of my most used bags in my collection but i'll link that video above i think no matter what your wardrobe is colorful neutral this bag really just goes with everything. Now the next bag on my list is one that is not going to stay neutral for much longer and I'll show you why. It is my patent white Givenchy. I believe this is the Pandora something or it's like from the Pandora line but it's more updated than the Pandora box. I don't really remember exactly what it's called. No matter how well you take care of it, it just gets a yellow tinge. I don't even know if it's gonna come off on screen as like yellowy as it looks in person. I would say if you are collecting neutral bags and you wanna add white, go for regular leather. That's much easier to clean. White patent, once it gets like yellow, there's nothing you can do about it except for dye it. I'm gonna decide probably a deeper color, maybe like a fuchsia or maybe even like a darker blue or something like that and have them dye this bag so I can get use out of it because I love this style. I bought this because I think white and gold looks amazing together and when this was the shiny bright white, the gold popped in such a gorgeous way. As gorgeous as patent white is, I would recommend you stay away from it. Next bag on my list is the Fendi Baguette. This I bought when this print just was being re-released but again it's brown and I just don't wear it enough but I wanted to have such a classic style in my collection it's a very functional bag I love the fashion history I love that it's been featured in so many movies and TV shows I do always want to have a bag at my collection I do recommend still going vintage because even though the vintage price has gone up on the pre-love market it's still about half of what you would pay for a normal one so if I loved brown and I love neutrals, this would have been like such a great buy and I would have gotten amazing use out of it. The next bag on my list is one that is technically not sold anymore, but you can find them all over the pre-love market. The Balenciaga City, this is the size small. I prefer this kind of, I believe it's called the edge hardware because that means that this bag can go a little bit dressier and it works great for casual wear as well. So this is my workhorse travel bag. If you're looking for that like great black bag that's durable at a better price point than a Louis Vuitton or a Chanel. I highly recommend considering these discontinued styles, buying them on the pre-love market. The next bag on my list is my Pauchette Matisse. And as you've heard me say a thousand times that I don't really wear brown in my wardrobe, this is the brown bag that I actually wear. If you do wanna have some neutral classic bags in your collection, but your style is a little more out there, or colorful, or you know, a little bit different than the typical neutral girly style, 
Getting a neutral with some embellishments or something a little bit different about it is a great way to add a classic neutral bag to your collection in a more funky way. I have found this bag to be the best bag and I am praying that one summer collection that they will do a pastel canvas version of this with like a pink leather trim or a blue leather trim or something because this would be my number one most used bag if it fit more with my summer wardrobe. It does get more use in the fall winter especially when I travel because this this back pocket is so good for holding your like easy access things and then this is so secure that you can keep your things that you don't need to get to a lot inside next we have my Celine luggage I've had this for at least 10 years now don't use it a lot anymore but when I got this this was my everyday throw everything in their bag it's scratched up and marked up I mean you can see the wear on this there's some discoloration on the handles. I've used it so much. You're looking at gray. Really look at the undertones and the shade of gray you're going for. I found that a lighter gray has a little more effect of almost a white bag. It works for a lot more in a colorful wardrobe. Another bag I think that if you pay attention to the undertone and the shade that really complements your wardrobe and your skin tone is a beige bag. I wore this dress specifically because this shows a lot of the colors I wear typically and how it plays and look at it next to my skin tone as well. A lighter beige on me I have to be very careful because I am very pale. A lot of lighter beiges that have a peachy undertone that look great on medium to dark skin tones. It makes me look pink. I like to wear pink but I don't like to look pink. Paying attention to the shade of beige or tan or whatever you want to call this color in your wardrobe makes a big difference on how it's going to suit you and look more personalized to you. I also really prefer buying a beige bag in a very classic ladylike style because I feel a beige is a very ladylike color. I ended up selling on my two Balenciaga cities that I had in beige because one I think they were a little too light for my skin tone and also the style was just too casual and I think beige is a very formal and elegant color that it lends itself very well to an elegant shaped bag that's also quite classic. The next bag in my collection is my Saint Laurent eye care. Yes, it's a trend bag, but I think it has enough classic element. This will be a bag that I can use forever and it's not gonna look dated. It almost has that Chanel classic diamond quilting. Anything with a diamond quilting really does lend itself more towards feeling classic even when it's in a trend shape. I like to buy my travel bags in black. So I got this bag with that in mind. I haven't used this a ton yet, but I do really enjoy it because it has these like thicker wide straps and it just fits the world. And something that I think makes it a little bit more special in terms of a neutral bag is that you can change the shape with the chain. So finding that versatility in a piece and different ways you can wear it or change the shape really makes a neutral bag stand out. This bag is one that actually my mom passed down to me. Now I store smaller LV boxes in here. That's why it looks a little boxy and weird. Otherwise it kind of sinks in a bit. It's very abused. You can see the patina, you can see the watermark. It's one that I have replaced the string on, but otherwise it's held up pretty great. I will eventually have to replace the strap as well because this bag has been really well loved. Even though it's not quite my style, it's a great travel bag. The lap top fits up and down. I use this as like your carry-on personal item. Style might come and go a little bit but generally you can wear a bucket bag anytime and it still like works. So I wanted to really just highlight this and show I totally get why buying neutrals and buying them in a classic way is beneficial because you do get that cost per wear, you do get that longevity, you do get that ability to pass it on later and it still be in style. There is also absolutely nothing wrong with buying neutrals. The next bag I have is my Saint Laurent Vicky. I used to buy Patton all the time but it just it's very hard to maintain and keep shiny and moisturized here in Dubai. And like you saw with my white patent one, it just discolors over time here, even if I store it out of sunlight. Black patent leather is one that I would still recommend if you want a black leather bag that has a little bit of a different finish and has a different feel to it, because this lends itself really beautifully to evenings and it dresses up any outfit. Now it does show fingerprints, so you have to wipe it down a lot. Out and about, a glasses cleaning cloth with like no chemicals on it is a great way to just, you know, if you get something on it or fingerprint or something, just wipe it off quickly. But generally you wanna have like a microfiber towel that's just dedicated to your patent leather bag. No chemicals, nothing, just to wipe it down after each use, before you store it keep it looking nice. Pretty hard wearing, you can, if you spill a drink, you can wipe it off. It's a great leather in black. So 
I highly recommend if you do love Patton to consider black. The next bag on my list is my Louis Vuitton on the go. I just prefer black for travel bags. I bought this as a travel bag. You guys can see the corners are beat up. This thing has been overstuffed. It holds like my life. I knew like you can even see there's like a scratch on it here. I knew this was going to get beat up. I bought this bag fully aware this was a beat up durable travel bag. That's totally Louis Vuitton's forte and honestly this thing has held up. I mean there are marks and dings. This is a heavy bag but generally I'm not holding it much when I'm traveling. I sit it on top of my rolling carry bag so it's not a big deal to me but if you're conscious of weight definitely go for the canvas version and they have neutrals and they usually do them for the like limited edition collections and colors as well. If you're looking for like neutral luggage type pieces, Louis Vuitton has a great selection. This is user error. It's not bag error. I overstuff this. I have way too much weight in it and the handles are holding up. Like I'm very impressed with how this has held up as much as I beat it up. I'm not really sure if you would consider it neutral, but I do because it's white and it's this pearl vanina bag. Every neutral collection needs a special evening bag. There's so many options with rhinestones or pearls or whatever it is that are maybe like in that white or even like rhinestones and pearls on black options that I think lend themselves really beautiful to evening if you want an alternative to like a satin formal evening bag. I really love just having this in my closet as almost like a decor piece. So this kind of does double duty. And I think it's probably one of the most special pieces I have in my neutral collection. Getting towards the end, but I still have a few special bags to show you. And this one is my Prada nylon backpack. It's probably one of the most classic bags Prada makes. I had this back in high school with the silver hardware when the trend got over I gave it to my mom she loves the bag won't give it back it came back and it was like five times the price of what I paid for it originally I found this one at the outlet mall luckily with the gold hardware because I prefer gold hardware if you're doing activities outside if you've got kids you need to have you know snacks and maybe bottles of water in here you need to like wipe this clean in case something gets spilt on it it's a super durable bag but because it's black I love using it for like those more outdoorsy things I don't mind taking it to a park even though this doesn't always have its moment, it always comes back. So it's one that I've learned my lesson, I'm keeping it in my collection, and I just know there's sometimes I use it more and sometimes I use it less. Another bag I have in my collection that I really love, it's so unexpected, I wanted a white Chanel for so long. It's this seasonal style, this is a vintage from, I believe, 1994, 1996, I don't remember exactly. But this is, has the reissue hardware and it's black and white. It's a very ladylike style. You have like the three pockets with a zip pocket inside and a flat pocket here. Have a completely neutral collection and you wanna keep it completely neutral. Mixing your neutrals so there's a little bit of contrast, a little bit of something interesting about it. Picking a different shape or like a vintage shape that's a little interesting will helps bring some diversity into your neutral collection. This is one that I find ticks like all the boxes. It has that vintage style. It's very ladylike. It's classic in its own way, even if it's not a specific classic style like the classic flap. It also gives just more visual interest to an outfit because you have the contrast between the black and white. So it stands out a little more than just a solid neutral bag. Another neutral bag in my collection is a very, very beat up, which I tried to fix. Link that video above if you haven't seen it. I didn't think it was worth taking to a leather doctor, like how much money it would take to fix this bag for how I would use it. This is my knock around. Like, I don't care about this bag anymore. It's pretty much ruined. The patent leather cracked. It's still cracking in other places. I think the eye care now replaces in my collection. This was my Mary Poppins bag. You can literally use it as an overnight bag. You can use it as a carry-on bag. Before the patent cracked, this thing was like indestructible. When I moved to Dubai, all of my patent leather just started going downhill after a few years of being here. And this was one of them that it happened to. There's no point in selling it. There's no point in like paying a lot of money to have it fixed up because it's never going to be like perfect. The point I wanted to make about this, if you do buy patent, don't get a slouchy shape, get a structured shape because patent like over time as you're using it as the bag is bending, eventually it's going to crack. This was like a lesson well learned. When I bought this bag, it was like pre Instagram and all of these tips and stuff. Like patent is just not made to bend and mold. And the last bag on my list is my Chloe Faye backpack. I let it get wear. I let it, you know, sink in how it wants to because I don't know, I just feel Chloe is one of the few brands that looks better as it gets wear to it. 
it almost gives it more of a vintage feel. Now, if this happened to one of my Chanel bags, I would freak out. There are certain bags I'm very particular about and I don't like them to show wear at all. But when it comes to a slouchy, mixed metal, mixed material, like, I don't know, there's just something cooler about it when you get that wear on it. And it shows that use and love on the bag. This is also one of the most versatile neutral bags that I have. It has a top handle strap, so you can carry this as a shoulder bag. You can completely remove the backpack strap carry it on one shoulder you can carry it on both shoulders it just has so much versatility to it you can even zip or open this so you get more room inside <sighs> thank you guys so much for watching i know that was a long one i thought this was a little bit of a different way versus doing a full collection video and i hope you got some really helpful tips out of it let me know if you like this format a little bit better like breaking down like a section of my collection as a collection video versus like an entire collection if you did enjoy this video please don't forget to give it a like and don't forget to follow me on instagram and tiktok to see how i style my bags and i'll see you guys next time. Bye.